This is an optimization problem to be able to arrive at a final condition while minimizing fuel. So we're going to have an objective function of minimizing the integral of u squared. Now u is the acceleration that we're going to apply. That's the thing that we can decide for this thing in motion. And we're going to relate the acceleration to the velocity. And we'll also relate the velocity to the position with simple differential equations. Now this also works for more complicated examples. But the main thing is we're going to minimize the integral of this acceleration squared. So as we use more acceleration, we're going to penalize that. We're going to integrate from 0 to 1. And we're going to see if we can solve this optimization problem, minimizing that objective subject to these two differential equations. We're going to set this up in a way that it allows it to solve it very efficiently with these beginning and end points for position, and then also for velocity. We have an initial velocity of 1. We have to get to a final velocity of negative 1. We have to stay less than 1 ninth on the position. So here's the description of the optimization problem. We have a parameter u, that's our acceleration, that we start uh, from a starting time of 0 to final time of 1, variable x, which is our position, variable v is the velocity, and we'll have an initial velocity of 1 and a final velocity of negative 1. Now here's our optimization problem. We've already reviewed those equations. We'll report the optimal objective value and display a plot of the relevant variables for position, velocity, and u, acceleration, and we'll discuss whether the constraints are satisfied. Now it has both initial conditions as well as final conditions. So it's a boundary value problem. And the objective is the integral of u squared, not just u, and that must be minimized by adjusting the value of u throughout the time period. So this also we need to show that it has sufficient grid points. And so we'll do that as well, just to show. Okay, I'll, we'll go ahead and type out this code now. We'll create the gecko model with 101 time points. Later we'll go back and set it to 201 time points, going from 0 to 1. And we'll create our parameter u. This is our acceleration. We'll turn its status on, meaning that the optimizer can adjust it. We'll have our variable x and our variable v, that's position, and then also velocity. We have an upper bound of 1 ninth on that. Here's our uh, objective value with the integral function there. And we will also define final so that we just minimize the final, not the integral along the path. Then we'll also have our equations. These are just the equations of motion, position, and velocity. And then we'll also say that our final has to be equal to 0, and our final velocity has to be negative 1. I have to write it that way so that it's not infeasible. OK, if I put a 1 on the other side of the equation, I'd need to multiply that by final. All right, so here's our objective that we're going to minimize. And I've also shown there an alternative way to meet the final conditions with soft constraints, objective function constraints. And I, here I have uh, I mode 6. I'll say nodes equals 2 and solver is 1. And then I'll solve it. I'll display. I'll set that equal to false. Uh, if you have problems finding a solution, then set that equal to true. And also display the final objective function value you know, at the very end. OK, so now we're going to go ahead and create a figure. And the very first one is going to be of our x values to make sure that constraint is satisfied. We'll also plot the constraint there on the plot with the red dotted line. OK, so that's our position. And then we'll also include a legend. And I'll show you the plot as well that we're generating here. Uh, I've already done this before. I just want to show you the first couple subplots there. And we'll go into a little bit more detail on those plots and looking at the solution and making sure that the constraints are satisfied for this problem. Now we'll go ahead and plot the acceleration value there as well. This is our thrust or acceleration. All right, and then we have our final subplot, and this is going to be the objective function. So we're going to want to see how the objective function changes as we go from 0 to 1. And this is, again, the integral of the acceleration squared. All right, so here we'll just put on some labels and then a legend and label the x level time and then show the plot. 
So let's go ahead and run this. I'm going to come to back to the dynamic optimization course. And if you come down to practice midterm three, this is the um, practice midterm. You can see the PDF. You can also see the GitHub solution notebook as well as a Google Colab. I'm going to run this through Google Colab. If you run it here, don't forget to insert a cell and then pip install gecko. And it'll ask you, you know, this isn't authored by Google. Click Run Anyway, and it will install Gecko on this Colab, in this Colab environment. And then once that has finished, then we can go down. We already previously solved problem one, solving ODEs and minimizing an objective together with the collocation equations. In this case, we're not going to be writing out our collocation equations ourselves. We'll let Gecko do that for us. All right, so it's installed Gecko, and let's come down here to problem number two. And this is the code that we just developed. And we're going to solve this from zero to one. Okay, and there's our final objective, 4.009, and there's the plot. So let's come back to that plot that we generated and just look at the... Um, Let's go ahead and look at the solution here in the plot. And we can see in the first subplot, we have our values of x. And there's our constraint. It has to be less than 1 ninth the entire time. So it starts at 0, ends at 0. So those are satisfied. And then we have that upper constraint. Also, the velocity starts at 1, finishes at negative 1. There you can see the objective function that we're trying to minimize. Now, we can also see the acceleration path. It starts at negative 6, ends at negative 6 as well, but during the middle, it has a period of zero acceleration, so it's just stationary. You can also see that the objective function stayed constant during that middle part and then increased at the beginning and at the end. So all the constraints are satisfied. Let's go back and also increase the nodes to 201 and then run it again. And one of the reasons why we want to do this is to make sure that our solution isn't dependent on our grid. So we want to make sure that our solution is, um, doesn't, objective function doesn't change with the number of points that we have. You can see it didn't change very much. We got essentially the same solution there. Okay, so I'm gonna come back to the course website and just give a preview of what we've done so far and where we're going with the next one. Okay, this is our practice midterm three. You can see problem number one, problem number two that we just finished, and then problem number three is gonna be regression with an outlier.